Hey, cock 45 here on a hot, humid day. Got a CZ 550 FS we're going to give you a look at today. Really pretty nice uh, rifle, in my opinion. It is chambered in 6.5 by 55 Swede, one of my very favorite cartridges. And uh, just a pretty nice rifle. We'll talk about what we like about it, what we don't like about it. We well, always start out up here at 230 yards and break in the new big gong over there. It's, it's also a harder steel. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot the thing, if I can hit it, okay? Uh, even though it's not a small target, you know, standing with iron sights is still not, uh, uh, it's still a little bit of a challenge for me, I'll have to admit. All right, 240 grain, federal ammo. I think I know where to hold. See if I can do it. Now we're going across the first hill, of course. <laughs> Did you hear that? I believe it hit it. Let's try it again. <laughs> Bong, that's what I wanted to hear. We'll take a look at it, let you know how much damage it does to it. But yeah, that's it. Uh, that's just 230 yards. But again, it's a big gong. But you know, that's why I like these big old gongs and things. It's fun to just uh, rear back and take a shot standing, not have to bench rest and, you know, get out your best scope and all that sort of thing. It's fun just to, just to plink away. All right. So let's bring this over here and lay it down we've got an empty round in the chamber don't we we have a piece of brass empty brass in that chamber and that is, that is a pretty rifle and speaking of that in our gun rights and our freedom guess what today is i'll let you guess as i go down here uh let's see i'm gonna go ahead and empty this i would just feel better about it okay i'm gonna empty it there we go throw it rounds all over the place there we go because i'm gonna walk down range and you know, it's just good practice, all right? Even if you make a mess. I'm gonna find my lighter. And uh, yeah, has to be a cigar lighter. Is this a clue? Yeah, you're right, it's Independence Day. <laughs> Independence Day, and we are making a video. Yeehaw! Pretty cool. And it's been raining for about. <laughs> is that all there is, John? That big old thing? Uh oh. No, it's not all there is. Right. Never know what you're going to get out of these things, do you? Uh, <laughs> but it's the 4th of July. Uh, in this country, at least, we celebrate Independence Day. We are so glad to be independent. And <laughs> Hope you don't mind. You might be watching this uh, in uh, August or December. It seems a little odd, but we're a little odd. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? It might go on for a long time, John. We might ought to start talking about firearms. We just have, it, have the freedom ringing in the background. How's that? Yeah, it is the Independence Day. And if you're in uh, who knows where around the planet, we have a lot of loyal viewers all over, all over the planet, which uh, we appreciate. And you may not even know what our Independence Day is, but it is. Uh, we, are, we became independent from... Uh, England, believe it or not, uh, way back in the 1700s. So, uh, and that's one reason that we are allowed to have these sorts of things. And they are not, when you get right down to it. So we have held on to our rights, wrote them into the Constitution. And a uh, pretty important thing to do and then to protect it. It's not just uh, enough to have it on paper, uh, but you've got to defend it every day. You have to, not with your life or with violence, fortunately, but in courts of law and uh, writing letters to the editor, which many of you do, 
I have done, uh, again, supporting gun rights organizations. It just doesn't just continue on its own. And uh, so we've, uh, we've been able to maintain it this long in almost every state, okay, in this country. So, all right. So anyway, important, important day. And, you know, we didn't dream all this up because it's Independence Day. We were going to do a video anyway. And then we're going to shoot some fireworks off. So we thought we'd shoot off a little bit during, during the video. But mainly this is about the uh, CZ 550FS which uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this rifle or not, but the 550 is a, it's a pretty popular bolt gun from CZ. Comes in a lot of different chamberings, comes in a different sizes, medium, the larger, the, the FS model, depending on what you're chambering. Now this FS model stands for, guess what? Full stock. See if you can figure out why, okay? Kind of a, I think it's, I don't know if it's pronounced monolicker stock, you know, the classic uh, monolicker stock that goes all the way out to the muzzle with the steel end cap. Pretty neat. Uh, I've, I've always uh, wondered what I think about them. I see them, I have seen them. There's some really nice rifles like this and I, I can never decide, do I really like that or not? I think I do, it's grown on me over the years. It's different. Uh, there's lots of uh, arguments about why they did that originally. Uh, and I think probably the most feasible is for protecting the barrel, you know, banging around in the mountains or on the horseback or whatever. And I think it was generally on the shorter barrels, but it was uh, good protection for the barrel. I was reading about that. Somebody said it was for a, to may help make it a walking stick. Uh, yeah, really? Using your rifle as a walking stick? Maybe. But I think it was mainly for protection. And it, it gives you a nice, uh, nice looking rifle. Uh, I, I've, I've seen this rifle at... Uh, shot show and nra meeting you know at the cz booth and a couple of others i thought we need to get a hold of those sometime and i, I wrote it down finally did because if you've been around a while you know this this uh, swede cartridge 6.5 by 55 is one of my favorite rounds that's why i brought out the swedish mauser there that is one of my very favorite rifles and i didn't even know it until a few years ago wasn't familiar with it wasn't familiar with the cartridge and boy is it a nice one and, you know, basically, it's really what the uh, 6.5 Creed, Creedmoor, excuse me, uh, you know, the Grendel, a lot of these are, you know, going back to the, a lot of the popular cartridges of today, go back to the 6 millimeter, the 6.5, 6.8, whatever. And there's a good reason for it. It's the ballistic coefficient, the sectional uh, density of the bullets. They are much more effective than they ought to be. It's really weird. Uh, a long bullet and I mean bullet, not case, but the actual bullet uh, is extremely effective, even in a smaller caliber than a 30 caliber. Uh, and it's been proven for over 100 years. This cartridge came about in about 1894. And uh, so that's a long time ago. It's almost 123 years ago. And uh, we just keep duplicating it. Uh, again, the Creedmoor is essentially this ballistically, very, very close. And it's just sweeping at least this nation by storm. Uh, mainly, it's, I guess it's almost that cartridge in a shorter cartridge, what it comes down to. Uh, very, very similar ballistics. And, uh, you know, just good. Just nice stuff. Soft recoil, but very effective. Very flat shooting. Keeps its uh, velocity way out there. Uh, flat shooting. Just a nice round. And I've, I've never even fired the, the Creedmoor. But again, I fired this, so it's essentially the same thing, just in different firearms. So anyway, some might argue with that, but they're very, very similar. Uh, I've done a little bit of reading you know, on it. Uh, I know, it's amazing, I can read, but I have. Uh, there are people who just say there's just not much difference between the, what, the 260 Remington, the uh, Creedmoor, and, and this round. But this rifle is really what the video is about. I just want to brag a little bit on that cartridge if you're not familiar with it. Patterned after the Mauser action, the bolt, it probably looks familiar to you. I'll take the bolt out. Look at that. There you go. You got your two locking lugs up there, your safety lug back there. Look at that extractor, the big claw extractor. Uh, it just looks a lot like a Mauser. Got a little bit of different shield on the back there, but very, very, very similar. And you have a three position safety on it. Now, this is a little bit like a Winchester. You push on that to release the bolt or to put it back in. And you got your three position safety and now all the 550s don't have that as i understand but the fs does have the three position safety where you know it's in fire right now and in the middle uh you can still work the bolt but it won't fire trigger won't work all the way back it locks everything up 
kind of a Mauser like on that, isn't it? You can tell when it's cocked, you got the firing pin protruding there. Now this also has a, uh, a an adjustable set trigger. You see the little screw up under there. And I haven't adjusted it. I'll let whoever wins this in the e-gun or auction mess with that maybe. But uh, it, it is a is a set trigger and the way it works is it's just a standard trigger the way it is now. And that's the way actually I was shooting it over there because I like the standard trigger. It feels pretty good. You can just pull the trigger. I'll snap it. Or you can lighten it up by pushing forward on it. I like to use my thumb. It's easier. You push forward and now it's a target trigger. It's a little bit lighter. And all that's adjustable. Okay. So rather than have two triggers, you know, some of the old rifles, you pull the rear trigger to set it, like on an old sharps or something. And then the front trigger would be a hair trigger. So this is pretty convenient, I think. Uh, you might have a different opinion on that. You might have a totally different opinion on this rifle. Uh, I kind of like it, I think, because it's different. Um, I like the contour of the stock. It's a pretty rifle. It's Turkish walnut. And it fits me pretty well. It really does. It, uh, I could always use my extender pad, but it's not too bad. It really isn't. You know, metal sights, uh, that was one of the attractions of it too. It's just a handy little rifle that I, I knew I'd enjoy shooting. And really, to tell you the truth, I was half wondering if maybe I would not want one of these. And this is a good opportunity to try it out for you all and let you know what I think about it. And if I really fall in love with it, I might have to have one. They run around though, uh, seven to eight hundred bucks. I uh, forget the MSRP is eight fifty or nine hundred or something like that. But so they're not cheap, but they're not crazy expensive either. Okay, for a fine, fine rifle. So it's a really good middle of the road rifle. It's not a custom fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar rifle, but it's not uh, not a low end, you know, four hundred dollar rifle either. Just a just a just a good rifle. You know, if you've got the kind of bucks. For that, I think uh, I think you, I've been shooting it for a few days. So again, I'll try to be objective, but I, I kind of like it. I really do. Now, it, it, you can't use the uh, clips like you can on the Mauser over here. You know, you've got your clip loading device because this is not a military gun, so there's nowhere to do that. You know, I guess. Yeah, I don't think I can do that now. I can't. I brought it out there just to show you. You can't do it. You got to load them individually. And uh, let's do that. Speaking of that, it holds five. And you can uh, you can put five in and still close the bolt if you want to. But I, mean, I won't do that. You could you could get six in. In other words, you know, we're not going to combat. So, boy, it's humid today. Uh, so let's take some shots and uh, let you know whether or not you need to buy one of these. <laughs> Again, just like with handguns, it's a great time. There's there's so many choices in rifles. Wow, there's so many. So many people are making accurate rifles now. Part of that's because of technology, you know, and just the machining nowadays. Uh, you know, for example, Savage, I mean, you name them, there's just a lot of companies. You can get a rifle for four or five hundred bucks that shoots better than maybe a custom rifle of, uh, what, 40 years ago, that sort of thing. So you don't have to pay a lot for a rifle to get a pretty accurate one. You all know that, or like the Ruger, uh, Oh man, I'm drawing a blank on it. But you know, the low end Ruger bolt action rifle, we did one in 308. And I think they have one chambered in the Swede cartridge too. You know, rifles like that don't cost much and they're they're accurate, you know. So uh, it, we're living in good times. I've never really been a hunter. So most of my experience with these kinds of rifles has come in the last 10, 15, 20 years, really. Uh, the military surplus rifles I just really like. And then having tried some of these out, uh, partly just for you all, uh, because you have interest in them and uh, have expressed uh, the desire for us to get one. So I've learned a lot because of you all. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Let's take a couple shots here now. All right. Now I could take a shot at that piece of fireworks. I wonder if I ought to risk it. Let's do it. I'll be careful not to hit the steel. Uh, probably won't do anything. No, just put a hole in <laughs> What was I expecting? But you know what? It is the 4th of July, so I think it's in order to smoke a little pot. Oh, <laughs> well, just put a hole in it, but we got a little smoke. Let's put a couple on that uh, target there. Since it's dated the 4th of July. Oh, yeah, nice. Mm. Such a sweet round. We need to down a two liter. Mm. <laughs> a lot of power. I have a few rounds in my pocket. I think I'll put a couple of those in there. Yeah, yeah this uh, 
the sectional density again you might want to if you're learning about firearms look up sectional density uh, it'll be abbreviated SD all things and uh, ballistic coefficients and all that but sectional density is an interesting read it, it really is uh, and you know some of the magical almost magical qualities that you get with uh, rounds like this and the beauty of it is the recoil is so mild you know and yeah you can't hate that if you can get really uh, a really effective round without a lot of punishing recoil there's a Kentucky 2 liter again <laughs> and you can tell the way it hits those things it's just like a 308 Ooh, whoa that one tried to attack <laughs> I'll be darned that might as well take out that one too and yeah, we've got a red plate over there let's go ahead and try the little the smallest one no warm-up we'll go with the small one Yeah, wanted to miss it first. I was low, I think. Yeah. Pow, I was just a little bit low. Pretty nice rifle. Uh, pretty wood. I like that. What else about it here? Of course, you got your floor plate. You can open up there and clean it. Uh, this is uh, this little button here you might have seen. That has to do with taking the bolt apart. If you're going to take the bolt apart, take the back off, you push that. Well, let's see, you cock it, I think, and you push that and bring it up. And then when you bring the bolt out, that locks it. It keeps the bolt locked when you bring it out in order to take it apart. Okay, so that's what that little button's all about there. Uh, I have no idea what the red and white is there. Maybe that's just a patriotic uh, coloring or something. Oh, I bet it has something to do with fire and safe. Yes, fire and safe. Y'all knew that. Uh... There was something else about it here. I was gonna. Well, you got your hooded front sight. It's got a little white dot up there. It's it's fairly easy to see. And uh, let's open up the bolt before I start putting my hand out there too much. Then you got this uh, you know, this metal guard up there. It's kind of nice. So it, it's just an interesting design. I think it's one of those designs that people either love it or hate it. Sort of. Maybe that's too strong. But you either like it or you don't. How's that for profound? Uh, but, but really, you know, some people look at that and think, nah, don't like it. You know, I want a half stock, you know, or a longer barrel, one or, one or the other. Uh, or I just really think that's cool. Uh, and I actually am in the camp of uh, preferring a half stock usually, uh, especially on muzzle loaders and, you know, a lot of classic rifles. I, I like that stock ending about here and, and then, you know, the barrel, generally speaking. But uh, a lot of these things have grown on me over the years, and uh, I've gotten to where uh, if it's a piece of history, especially, uh, you know, well, you know, like some of the Mausers, they've got a long wooden stock on them. Uh, yeah, it's fine. So uh, I'm not sure why they copied the Mauser action because everybody knows it's junk, right? That was a joke. It's anything but junk. If you're going to copy and make a bolt action tomorrow, if you're gearing up in your basement right now, uh, you're on your spreadsheet figuring out how to make them and how to make a profit and You got your hammer and your chisel your dremel tools and you're you're gearing up to, to build some bolt-action rifles uh, You're designing it and everything right now before you go another step Make sure you're copying the Mauser action because that's probably a wise choice. Okay. All right Let's load it again uh, I did tell you we're loading. Here's the ammo. We're loading. It's uh, it's not loading it. We're you <laughs> 140 grain soft point uh, Swedish ammo from Federal. It's cool if they load this stuff. Uh, it, it's a wonderful little round. That's copied. Like I say, do a little research if you're uh, curious about sectional density and that sort of thing. And uh, I tell you, after you read some on that and, and about this round or the Creedmoor and the, the Grendel and that kind of thing, you really will rethink uh, maybe your plans to build a, three, a 308 or 30 out six, you know, depending on what you want, of course. But I love those cartridges too, and they're, they're wonderful. But you know, it just depends on what you're going to do with it. If you're going to bench rest, shoot, you're going to hunt, or just anything, uh, there's just so many good choices now. And we've got some more target choices here, don't we? So let's put some of them out of their misery here on Independence Day. All right. 
There's a two liter that needs to be put out of his misery. <laughs> oh, some milk jugs. Boy, a lot of force. It's kind of stiff, I'll have to say. And that might be one of the negatives. It is new, but it, it, it's not just like glass and moving. It, it's still kind of stiff. Now, I'm assuming it would loosen up a little bit. Uh, let's knock a bowling pin off like right there. Yeah, I think it'll do it. Let's go and hit the big red plate. Ooh. Nailed him. Nailed him. I could shoot the gong on this hill too, I guess. I... It, it's uh you know there's not a real need to it's a little harder than the other gong like i said but we'll shoot something over there some more uh anything else before i you know you got your metal side i did adjust the sights a little bit i loosened the screw and i slid it up just a hair because it was shooting just a little bit lower than i liked uh the windage seems okay so you know i don't mess with them too much if they seem to be all right i'm not taking it to a match for competition or anything made in czech republic CZ550, and again, this is the FS model for full stock. And uh, gave you the pricing on it. Uh, I don't know, the negatives, I guess, like I say, it's a little stiff, assuming it'll loosen up. Uh, and uh, yeah, the machining and everything seems all right. Some of the uh, the roll marks and things, they're, they, they don't look like a, like a, a $2,000 rifle. You know, uh, which this is not, you know, uh, I'm not sure about some of the stamping, if that's all that, that attractive there. Uh, trying to be nitpicking here a little bit, I guess. But uh, pretty nice finish and uh, nice wood. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good old rifle that you could do a lot with, uh, no doubt about it. Just enjoy plinking and hunting and a little bit of everything. And again, and I think they have a nice reputation for accuracy. And of course, uh, this cartridge has a great reputation for accuracy. So we've got five more, right? Let's get that middle red plate. Ooh. Let's go ahead and put one on the gong. We need to go over there and take a look and see what it does to it. Uh, I'll shoot it, try it right in the middle. Hear that ring? I mean, you're worried about whether it was going to ring or not. <laughs> Let's go back to the left late red plate. It's hard. Oh, there's a little bit of cinder down here, John. Let's, uh, let's finish that piece off right there. Okay, and you know, I've got one round left. Uh, we were going to eat the watermelon, weren't we? No, let's go ahead and shoot it. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Uh, is, that was nice. It just obliterated it. You know, sometimes we end up with pieces and chunks right there, and we have to clean up and everything. It's nice when it just gets pulverized. So uh, anyway, kind of a Monlicker uh, style stock, uh, made in the Czech Republic, and uh, yeah, pretty cool rifle because it's uh, it, I think they're pretty widely available uh, in various calibers. It's not like it's a really hard to find uh, rifle either. And I'm still partial. Uh, I like polymer, you know, some things. If I want a good old durable gun, I can knock around, not worry about it. But then again, you know, I just like wooden steel uh, on some firearms. And some people just automatically default to polymer and stainless if it's going to be a, a, a firearm they hunt with, whatever. You know, I wouldn't necessarily do that as a hunter. Now, if I were climbing the mountains and the snow constantly and ice and Alaska or whatever, yeah, maybe so. But I just because I might get it nicked up a little bit, uh, that wouldn't necessarily send me to polymer stainless steel. Uh, you know, a firearm like this is just, it has so much personality that, uh, you know, it's the kind of firearm you hand down to your children or grandchildren. 
you know, you don't worry about little marks and blemishes here and there. You tell them about the hunt you were on when you scratched the bluing off right there and the little nick you got right there when that bear was chasing you had to bang it against a fence post or something, you know. Uh, so it just gives it character uh, in a lot of ways. So, because, uh, you know, wood and blued steel, it, it still looks mighty good, doesn't it? So, but anyway, I mean, I digress. It, uh, uh, you might have some negatives about it I'm not aware of, so you know, feel free to share. Unless it's because you work for the competition, of course. Uh, but it just seems like a really, uh, really nice rifle. And it's chambered in, I think this one, uh, most of these 550, they come in a lot of different uh, chambering, of course. I think this one comes in like 308, 30-06. Uh, the 9x3 by 62 millimeter is it? That's an old cartridge. I'm not even that familiar with that. I, I should be, but I'm not. I've read about it recently some. Uh, and then 270, I think. You know, most of your really popular cartridges. And again, one of the attractions was that because it's uh, chambered in a Swedish round. And because uh, I remember being at the SHOT Show or NRA meeting and kind of looking at rifles that were chambered in that because I, I like that round so much. Uh, I wanted to know what choices I might have if I wanted to add another uh, rifle chambered in it, you know, in addition to my Swedish Mauser, which is just unsurpassed. It's a big, big old long rifle, a little bit of weight to it, uh, but it's, it's definitely will always be my favorite in this chambering. But I thought maybe a handier rifle, one I'd scope out, put a scope on, and maybe play with it at longer range occasionally or something, even bench rest it, wow. Uh, it doesn't sound like me, does it? But maybe a little of that. So, anyway, that's what attracted me uh, to it initially when I saw it. So, the CZ 550, this particular model, the FS, is a pretty nifty gun. If you're looking for a, a firearm, you know, it, kind of in this category, I would suggest you, you know, give it a look. It's not doesn't seem like a bad rifle. Happy Independence Day. Life is good. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'm sure if you didn't, we'll be hearing from you. But while you're here, I wanna make sure you guys are aware of SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can get certified in gunsmithing with hands-on experience and also an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they are very accepting of GI Bill too. They work a lot with veterans. So go over to uh, sdi.edu and check them out. See if that's something that you're interested in. And also, while you're going out on the interwebs and looking at things like that, don't forget the Hickok 45 Facebook, if you're a Facebook kind of guy. Um, check that out, Hickok 45 Facebook. Also, uh, the real Hickok 45 on Instagram and Hickok 45 on Twitter. Don't forget to check that out. And also, we have a website now, Hickok45.com. Try to keep it simple for you guys, and especially those of you in Kentucky, www.Hickok45.com. You can go over there and find out about all kinds of different things that we're doing. Uh, we've got links to uh, the people that, that support our channel. We've got uh, links to our store. We have uh, merchandise, t-shirts and hats and different things over there if you want to check that out. So go to Hickok45.com. Most of everything is over there. Also, if you want to see some other content that you can't find on this specific channel, you can go to the Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel where that's you know, mostly me doing stuff over there and dad makes uh, an occasional uh, appearance over there. And also I have a Facebook, John Hickok on Facebook. You can also find the link to that in the description of the Hickok 45 and Son videos. And speaking of that, don't forget to check out the description of the Hickok 45 videos for any information about meet and greets and all that kind of stuff. Also, don't forget to check us out on Full 30. And if you've done all of that, all of those things, if you've completed all of that, then the only thing left to do is to watch a bunch more Hickok 45 videos. So I'll leave you to it and I'm going to finish painting these targets. <laughs>